Hello, Broken Wing Tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Wing Commander, the DOS version, with me, Blue Angulum. So last episode, we kind of talked about the intro. We did a lot of talking, and we played this flight simulator. Today, we're going to just get right to it and get to the story and all that. Um, so yeah, let's just go through. I'm, I am going to do some terrible voice acting, or amazing, depending on your opinion on things. Are you a pessimist or optimist? Um... And uh, just so you guys are aware, we have a cool scoreboard here. Uh, now they use, I think this is another small change between SNES, Super Nintendo, and uh, DOS. Uh, they use the, the proper name in the DOS version. I think they use the call sign in the Super Nintendo. So it would just say uh, Maniac, Angel, Spirit, Boss Man, Ice Man, all that. You know. But anyway, we'll surely climb this board. And uh, let's go talk to Shot Glass, the, uh, the barkeep. Belly on up, friend, and take a load off. You must be blue. I'm Shot Glass. Welcome aboard the Claw. Used to be a pilot myself, till the flea bag shot me up so bad I couldn't fly. I guess I flew with most every pilot on the Claw. So if you want to know how one pilot or another flies, old Shot Glass is the guy to ask. Stop by when you're off duty. We'll talk more. Now, he does try to tell you, and I, I understand there's some... AI personality between the different uh, pilots, although it's not substantial in this early game. Um, for instance, Marshall Maniac generally won't follow your orders, whereas Tanaka or Spirit will pretty much always follow your orders if you're inclined to give orders. Uh, and I think it does affect like their aggressiveness and how quickly they run away and stuff, but for the most part, you won't see a whole lot of difference unless you were directly watching someone like... Uh, Who's really ca passive? Uh, Major Taggart is Paladin versus Casey, who I believe is Iceman. Iceman is like super aggressive, even though he's cool as ice. He will shoot the heck out of anything. So will Hunter, and he's... Hunter is uh, St. John, I think. I forget all their first names or proper names. But uh, yeah, like Iceman and Hunter are like pretty gun heavy, whereas like Paladin and Knight are a little bit slower. And Maniac tends to shoot you instead of the enemy. So we'll talk about that later. Ah, oh, laddie, take a seat and tilt a glass with old Paladin. I recall once when I was just a lieutenant like yourself there. We were flying patrol, or Accord, the fourth planet in the Alliance system. These four Karathi Salty came zooming in with the sun at the backs. What is the point, monsieur? There is one, we. Oui? I was leading up to it, lass. That day we learned that a Salty will always turn to the left. It's got something to do with the way your engines and ducks are arranged. So when you tail a selfie, watch to the left. That's where he'll go when he makes his break. I think that's a lie, but uh, sure. I think old Paladin's going a little crazy. Also, they all have a very specific um, like racial type. <laughs> so we've got our Scottish guy, we've got our French girl. There'll be one for most ethnicities. I don't think there's a Russian in, in Wing Commander 1. There probably is in Wing Commander 2, though, I betcha. Bonjour, Lieutenant. Lieutenant, probably. Uh, no, it's, that's the English way, right? Lieutenant. You are called Blue, no? I am called Angel. I am just reviewing some figures of our recent encounters with the Kilrathi. You would like to know that uh, what I have learned, perhaps. The Drouthi is the Kilrathi fighter seen most in this sector. These figures show that 1.4 missiles are required to destroy the Drouthi. You have to exactly shoot four tenths of a missile to kill it. While over seven direct laser hits are necessary to destroy the same vessel. I hope this information is useful to you, Lieutenant. I mean, yeah, two missiles, but it depends on the missile. Again, if 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 the if the manual is correct, different missiles do different damage, as do different lasers and stuff. They measure it in centimeters of armor damage. Like the shields are gauged by the thickness in centimeters in terms of physical armor, and then Durasteel is like, so like a weapon might do like 20 centimeters of damage or something, and that's kind of how it works it out. But yeah, essentially you can boil all the weapons down to a number, and the shields and armor are the the, the HP you have to burn through. Shields regenerate, armor does not. Uh, this is our uh, barracks. So we are second Lieutenant Ankylo. We're in the Enyo system, first mission. And uh, I do have a lot of saves here. So again, unlike the Super Nintendo version where you have to write down a bunch of letters and numbers, we've got a proper saving system for the DOS, which is great. Um, I have to remember not to overwrite this one. 
because that's my side, like, non-LP campaign. I don't want to lose that. Um, I think I'll just stick to overriding the left side and we should be okay. Also, if you're playing along, just be careful that you click on the sheets if you want to save or the face if you want to load. Um, so I have definitely messed that up before and um, overwritten a save or loaded when I meant to save, which sucks. Also, you can quit here. Interestingly, the music track for this area of the barracks is very long. Like, this is a long sound song. And it goes on and on and on and changes different bits from the other themes. Which is pretty cool. Anyway, just, let's get going. Mission briefing. End your system. 0600. 264. Okay. We've got a- holy smokes, I didn't even click the button. The Tiger's Claw dropped out from jump space. Blue Devil Squadron has first patrol. You killer bees have the next shift. You rookies will be flying with experienced pilots on your first missions. And now it goes slow. I want the rookies to fly as wing leaders. You vets keep an eye on the kids out there. This is Colonel Halcyon, by the way. Here are the assignments. Blue, you're leading Alpha Wing. Spirit will fly on your wing. She's quiet, but she knows the ropes. She's totally Japanese. Sometimes you have to click the button, but not always. You're the wing leader, but if Spirit talks, you be sure and listen. Got it. Uh, yes, sir. Good. Now look at the computer. You'll check three possible jump points at about 20,000 clicks out. There are asteroids near Nav 2 and 3, so stay on course and fly right through the asteroids. Any questions? Yes, Commander. What are we to do if we encounter the enemy? Engage if the odds look good. Let Blue make that call. I saw his flight sim. He killed a million Southies on it. Your thoughts wander and then back to the Tiger Claw. Remember, this is no train sim. If you see the enemy, he'll be out to kill you. He knows I played on the train sim all episode last time. Be sure you do it to him before he can do it to you. Dismissed! I'm not sure why the uh, dialogue skips so quick there. It's not me, I, I didn't tap anything. So if you don't in install the Roland Sound Blaster, you probably don't hear the clacks on here. There's a lot of sound effects that get lost in the Sound Blaster, including the, uh, the uh, cockpit closing on you. All right, and we're off in an actual Hornet this time. So, what do you guys think? Pretty, pretty sweet, eh? Pew, pew, pew. So we got KPS set. You can stop or accelerate with uh, those buttons. Technically, you can spin, although I will almost never do this. You can't, at least I can't, fire my guns while I'm rotating. So that means it's almost useless in a dogfight. It seems cool, but I'll probably forget that it's even an option. You can bring up your map. Uh, you can actually skip things if you want. You can go out of order or go right back. Um, it's kind of nice. It's actually pretty progressive for its time. So I really like the fact that you can change things. And in fact, your position is relative too. If I go off course, although it would take a little while, uh, you could see me veering off to the side from my nav point. Uh, so you can actually work your way around asteroids just by doing a little, a little bit of afterburner, a little bit off course kind of thing, which is pretty cool. We got damage, no damage. We got uh, targeting, no targets. Well, look, there's targets. As soon as I say. Let's tell Spirit to uh, keep formation. She, we don't need her to go shoot these things. We'll be fine. We got a couple Drowthy over here. Just, just two. We're just going to keep Spirit under control. All right, this one wants to, this one wants to tangle. Let's go after this one. My problem with the uh, squad mates is they tend to uh, waste all their missiles on the first target they see, and then they shoot me. <laughs> like, if I get nice and close like this with an uh, enemy ship, um, even Spirit, who's like one of the most, uh, I don't know, nice uh, wingmen, wing ladies, she still um, managed to shoot me in the back fairly often. Now, I'm not sure, but I think 
early game Drowthies are actually even easier than normal Drowthies. Um, they don't... I bet you they have less shields or something or armor than uh, the later game uh, Drowthies do. It's like those guys went down stupidly easily. So uh, anyway, that was that was nothing. If, if, if this was your first mission, that might be an interesting dogfight. But if you've already played through the game, that's almost always a gimme. Now, one thing that's way different here is asteroids. Let's just autopilot our way over. Asteroids are much different compared to the Super Nintendo version. Um, in, in the Super Nintendo version, if you went above about 200 KPAS, you just died. You almost always got hit by a random asteroid. In the DOS version, you can pretty much zip through as fast as you want, as long as you're paying attention. Um, it's not 100% safe, but also asteroids don't one-shot kill you anymore, which they did in the Super Nintendo. So if you take one at full shields, you'll probably take some damage, but you won't just instantly die. Unless you're using your afterburners, which still don't afterburn your way through an asteroid field. That would be a bit crazy. Whoa! Every now and then you get one that comes in at a weird angle. The ones that are directly in front of you are pretty easy to dodge. But the ones that come in from the side at a weird angle, sometimes there's not much you can do, you just get hit. Which is kind of why I like to play at maximum speed when I go through here. You you spend the least amount of time just waiting for a random asteroid to hit you from the side. That said, technically you can look out your wings. And uh, there is like a third person... Yeah, you, you can fly like this, but I do not recommend doing this. Because, <laughs> uh, oh boy, motion sickness, here we come. Um, but yeah, you could you could play the game like that if you want, or from this angle. You know, it's pretty cool. Anyway, cockpit mode for the win. <laughs> Just in case you're really curious, you, you can play third person. Alright, we got Southie. Even easier than last time. Spirit, um... Keep formation. Now, every time you use autopilot in, uh... I don't know if it was the same on the on the Super Nintendo one, but every time you you go into cruise mode on autopilot in the DOS version at least it resets your um your 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 maximum speed down to a different number. I'm not sure how they determine it, uh, but if you're gonna dogfight, I tend to recommend going to max speed by default. Um, are you are you shooting, Spirit? Just. Chill. She's actually not fighting. It's probably the other Southie shooting at her. But I don't want her. I don't want her getting messed up. Oh! Someone fired a missile. No cool missile alarm, but... There we go. This guy's almost dead. Now, I did explain it a little bit in the, uh intro video, but uh, I believe these little Southie ships are supposed to only have dumb fire missiles. But uh, I think it should be... They seem to still lock on a little bit, uh, even if they're not supposed to be heat-seeking. But um, I guess they're probably a lot easier to dodge. Like, they don't really track you very much, even if they track you a little bit. Um, it's the heat-seekers, friend or foes, image recognizing, those kind of missiles are the, the much harder to, to dodge. One thing that kind of sucks about your allies, and this happens to me more often than I'd like to admit, uh, you sometimes will just ram into them if they're flying too close to you. I've seen them kill themselves by just crashing into me, and also crashing into enemy ships, and also capital ships that don't really move. So, um, yeah, be prepared for some weird stuff like that every now and then. Alright, so we gotta go through... Technically, we could have worked our way around this asteroid field if we'd gone back to Nav 1. Uh, I'm not sure if this is gonna line up properly, but I will at least attempt to angle ourselves around the edge of the, the asteroid belt. Now, being to the right of the, uh, of the target doesn't always mean you're on the right facing in terms of uh, the Nav map. Because remember, right is subjective. <laughs> now, we're, now we're on the left, right? <laughs> the, the right left. Anyway, it, um, I will try to skim around asteroids to save time, just so you can use autopilot. But it's not always so simple to, to dodge them if you don't know how to get around the map. Anyway, if you want to land on the Tiger's Claw, you probably should uh, ask for permission. So comms, request landing. And you do need to come in, you don't have to align yourself like this, but you do need to be at the front of the ship to dock. 
Uh, I think in the Super Nintendo ones, you just got within a thousand meters or something. In the DOS version, you do need to be at the front to fly into the hangar bay. So, don't- and also don't use afterburners or you crash into it. In the- in the SNES version, I think you could just afterburn right into it. Once you had permission, you just auto-docked. Just in case anyone's playing along like me, who, uh... Who, uh, was more familiar with the Super Nintendo version. Anyway, you got away pretty clean, sir, is the sign that we didn't take any damage. Mission debriefing. Oh, oh, 39. <laughs> oh, 39 hours. I don't know how to say that one. Welcome back, Blue. Looks like you survived your first trip out. V is a very able pilot, Commander. It is an honor to fly on his wing. That's high praise coming from Spirit. You should be proud, Blue. In any case, you flew well out there. I reviewed the mission report from your flight recorder. Let's go over the mission report. You got five of the hairballs, Blue. And Spirit came up empty because you didn't let her do anything. That's all then. Get out of here. So, you know, first training mission. It's not that hard. Um, I'm actually going to cut it here. I'm just going to do like one episode per... Uh, I think they cut out the smoking in the Super Nintendo version too. <laughs> you know, Nintendo. You got to... You gotta get rid of the wine and alcohol. The alcohol and smokes. But yeah, we'll keep these missions... You know, one 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 mission per episode will work. Some missions will be much longer than 15 minutes, so... You'll get your value eventually, don't worry. Anyway, I will see you next time for mission two out of two for the annual system. Thanks for watching, and I hope you've enjoyed. Have a great day.